Rosella Bjornsson was the first female pilot for a commercial airline in Canada. Now that happened in 1973 in Manitoba. Five years later, Oakville's own Captain Judy Cameron became the second. Nikki Wesley shares this story about Captain Cameron's trailblazing career in aviation. Captain Judy Cameron was the first female pilot hired by Air Canada in 1978. But unlike the men she flew with, she didn't dream of becoming a pilot as a child. There weren't any female pilots she was aware of. Her dream started with a summer job when she was 19. I was hired by Transport Canada to do a survey at all the little airports around the Vancouver area. And as a result of that, the very first day on the job, I was invited to go flying. My first flight was absolutely amazing. I'd never been in a small airplane before. The guy that took me flying demonstrated everything you're not supposed to do on your first flight. I saw a spin and a stall, and uh, I was absolutely terrified. I hung onto the side of my seat and I screamed. I thought I was on a ride at the exhibition, but I loved it. And when I got on the ground, I started to try and find out how I could become a pilot. Unsurprisingly, she was the only woman in her class. It was somewhat isolating. It was difficult. Um, I didn't really have a study group. Um, I found it hard. There were a lot of practical jokes. Of course, the guys were playing practical jokes on each other, but it was, um, it was a tough couple of years. You know, I was well away from home. I'd grown up in Vancouver and I was in a little town called Castlegar. Yeah, I was the only girl in the course and it was a big deal. I was the first one to graduate from that program, from the two-year program at Selkirk College. She found inspiration in her strong mother, Betty Evans. Too young to go overseas, Betty had joined the Air Force in World War II and worked as a stenographer. She believed in me and brought me up to think I could do anything that I wanted to do. And she was a single mom back in the 50s when this really wasn't socially acceptable. We had very little money. She slept on the sofa. We had a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, but she did not discourage me when I said that I wanted to fly. And that was a really big deal. Judy didn't realize what a sensation her trailblazing career path had caused until a few years later when in 1978, after securing a job with Air Canada, she was surrounded by reporters at the airport in Montreal. I remember one reporter asking me, she said, I'm just going to ask you general questions. Why? What got you interested in flying? How old are you? Where did you grow up? And then the first thing she asked me once the camera started rolling was, so, how do you manage to fly despite the ravages of premenstrual tension? I was absolutely horrified, especially that this question would come from a woman. But once I got with Air Canada, I was very well treated. Almost all the guys were great to fly with. There's always the exception to the rule, but a lot of them had daughters. And interestingly enough, a lot of their daughters are now pilots. And I've flown with daughters of some of the captains that I worked with over the years. So that's very cool. I won't say it was always smooth sailing. Um, you know, there was always a lot of attention and I was well aware of the fact that whatever I did, however I performed, would reflect on the women that followed after me. So sometimes that felt like extra pressure. Today, only 12% of student pilots are female and an even smaller number of pilots are women, approximately 5%. Cameron has worked hard over the years to encourage other women to go into aviation. And in 2019, the Captain Judy Cameron Scholarship was created. One of the greatest honors of my life, to be honest with you, um, I've done a lot of public speaking, just talking about my journey in aviation to try and encourage other women. And if I ever received a speaker's fee, I was putting it into a fund with a nonprofit that I'm volunteering with called the Northern Light Zero Foundation. But um, we hadn't received a lot of money towards the scholarship. So when Air Canada signed on, and now they'll be going into six years, they've done three years so far. And each year, four young women who are either becoming pilots or aircraft maintenance engineers will receive a scholarship. And uh, the biggest joy for me in the year is when I get to call them and tell them that they're the recipients. After retiring in 2015, Cameron was featured on a postage stamp. She was honored again more recently as she was appointed to the Order of Canada. I was absolutely overwhelmed and uh, I, I just feel there's so many other deserving people who do so much in the community that I was surprised to receive it, but uh, very honored. And if it helps promote other women in aviation and interest them in the career, then it's wonderful. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.